Welcome back to We Are Austin. Today is the last day of National Heart Month, but that doesn't mean we should ignore heart health for the rest of the year. Dr. John Williams from ARA is here to tell us how we can stay proactive. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Sorry about our mixed messages after we just ate some, you know, real healthy grilled cheeses. It looks good. I mean, yeah. I can't, moderation. We gotta have balance, right? Yeah. Moderation. So let's talk about heart disease. It is the leading cause of death in the U.S., which is pretty startling. Can you tell us a bit about the disease? Sure. So it's definitely a uh, heart disease, very common and often serious. It accounts for 600,000 deaths annually in the United States. Wow. Um, which that means that it actually is responsible for the death of one out of every four Americans every year. My goodness. Uh, to put that in context, that's as many of as all cancer deaths combined annually. Uh, the most common form of heart disease is coronary artery disease, mm -hmm. which is uh, responsible for 300,000 of those 600,000 deaths. And the coronary arteries are the, are the blood vessels that basically supply oxygenated blood you know, to the heart to, that the heart needs to, to pump. Wow. Um, we can kind of think of arteries throughout the uh, body as uh, pipes, so that when they're open and clean, things flow through easily, but you know, just like pipes can accumulate uh, debris over time that narrows them and diminishes that flow. Yeah. Arteries can as well, and, and that's in the form of uh, plaques that build up in the wall of the vessel and narrow the vessel down, decrease the flow. Uh, those plaques can sometimes rupture and then cause a, a blockage in, in, the, in the vessel, and so that's what results in a heart attack or even death. Yeah, so when you're assessing someone for the risk of heart disease or trying to look at these things, what are the factors that you're taking into account? Yeah, so so your doctor or healthcare provider, they basically will, uh, when they're looking at your risk for coronary disease, they'll, they'll uh, take into account your personal medical history, your mm -hmm. family history of heart disease. Yeah physical examination, um, results of uh, certain blood tests like a lipid profile, and then your risk factors. And, and those known risk factors are basically hypercholesterolemia, which is high cholesterol, hypertension, which is high blood pressure, yeah. um, obesity, smoking, diabetes, lack of exercise, and then an unhealthy diet. How much do you think the awareness is of heart disease? You know, those numbers that you gave are so staggering. Do you feel like the general public knows that this is such a risk? I think, um, fortunately, you know, thanks to, you know, events like this and um, that there is a growing awareness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, luckily we see fewer and fewer people smoking. Austin's a pretty fit city. You see yeah. people taking their uh, health seriously, but, um, you know, it's always good to be aware of and, and spread the word. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we're glad you're here educating us. So how can you detect some of those things you were just talking about or the presence of heart disease? Sure. So there are few examinations that attempt to, the one we're going to focus on is called a CT uh, cardiac scoring examination okay. or calcium scoring examination. Mm -hmm. And so what that does, it's a, it's a CT that's looking basically for the presence of those plaques in the wall, those plaques that have become calcified. Um, and so uh, this is actually an image uh, here okay. from one of those scans. Gotcha. This is what's called an axial or cross-sectional image um, through, through the patient from front to back. Um, this gray area in the, in the center here, that's, that's all your heart. And so then within that white circle, that's where one of the coronary arteries that, that we look at you know, is located. And so what we're assessing to see um, these little kind of white flecks, that, those represent calcified plaques in the wall of the vessel. Gotcha. So the next image um, shows kind of what we hope to see, which is um, here's the coronary artery on this slice. It's all nice and gray, and you see it doesn't have any of those white calcifications. Right. Uh, so that's basically a negative test. So there's no calcification, no so, coronary artery. So disease. this is what you want to see. That's what you want to okay. see. This next image um, is what we can and often see. You oh, see the wow. same thing. So there's there's the vessel again. That's the coronary artery. But you start to see some of these white, you know, calcifications yeah, absolutely. within the wall of the vessel. So uh, this indicates that there is, uh, you know, coronary artery calcification present. This is a relatively, you know, mild burden. Um, what we don't want to see is like on this next image. Um, now you see the whole vessel basically is just white and is occupied and involved with this calcified plaque. So this would indicate that not only is there presence of coronary artery calcification, um, the, this patient is it's extensive and they probably have a pretty, pretty significant risk of having a stenosis, a narrowing in the vessel that, that could cause some cardiac events. So that's probably pretty alarming when you see this. Who's the type of candidate that would be good for this kind of testing? Sure, that's a good question. Um, so your doctor kind of um, knows based on those risk factors that we talked about and then your age and your gender sort of know your pretest likelihood of mm -hmm. having uh, coronary artery disease and then this examination helps uh, sort of better uh, elucidate that. Um, and so patients that are sort of in that pretest moderate risk category or an indeterminate risk category are, are kind of best suited for this examination. Yeah. Um, the results of the examination, if, it, if it's negative, there's no calcification like on that one we saw, that's great. You have, you have no heart, uh, coronary artery disease. Right. Uh, that means your risk of having a heart attack in the next two to five years is basically almost zero. Oh, good. Um, but if you do have some calcification, then what we do is we sort of quantify that and then use that to stratify patients. Um, it, we determine the, what's called the plaque burden, which is, means how much of that calcification is there. Yeah. Put you in a 
category, um, you know, minimal, moderate, extensive, and then that again indicates, you know, how high your risk of having a stenosis. That helps your doctor determine if you, what kind of treatment you may need. Dr. Williams, thank you so much for being here. So if people want more information or they want to get this type of testing done, they can reach out to you guys. Sure. Tell us a bit about ARA. Where's the best way to find you? So we, you know, we have uh, 17 imaging centers throughout Austin and wow. the surrounding area. Yeah. Um, you, you know, ARAOSRAD.com. And, and a lot of doctors very educated like you and excited to help people feel their best. Thank you so thank much you. for being here. Stick around. Coming up next, you can unlock the potential.